our elk hunt is our September 1st to 10th hunt. Where my camp is, we only have 10 days to hunt elk and that's it. Later on in the evening, we went up right at last light and we went up the mountain we went and found this big velvet bull and we smoked and we got him. And the next day was spent uh, quartering him up and packing him back to camp on the horses. So we got the moose tag checked off. It's about a two and a half hour ride out to my best, our best elk hole, which is an old burn because it's called Grizzly Gulch. <laughs> There's so many grizzly bears in there, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's so thick, you can rarely see over 20 yards straight in front of you. You know, not counting getting up on a knob, which you normally do when we'll glass across this thing and, and glass and slides and glass here and glass there and try to call stuff up. So what it is, we ride down a main river system and then we hang a left into a little tributary, a little creek, and it's real tight, a tight valley that dumps into this main valley. It's like going down a hallway, hanging a left in a tight little walk alleyway. And you're riding up along the creek bed and then it, as you get in there, it widens out and widens out and widens out into a big kind of like a, a basin-y type of area. Slope up to the sides, creek all the way up from the bottom, flattening out in a marsh and muck and stuff that's, that's buried in the willow and spruce out in the middle. And at the widest point across the thing from, you know, from height of land to height of land, the widest point is probably maybe uh, a mile or three quarters of a mile across. And there's patches of spruce in there, there's patches of, of thick tangled willow, there's old burn, there's lots of burnt um, spruce logs about that big maximum, falling down crisscrossing, a few silver ones still standing, and there's elk, moose, and shit loads of grizzly bears in there. We were missing a, a rifle scabbard for a saddle for some unknown reason, I don't know why. So I volunteered up my scabbard for my partner's hunter, and so I was going gunless on, you know, in the grizzly gulch. And you, you know, a lot of my past, you know, a lot of people that know me, hung with me, especially my guy partners, I don't know why, I haven't a clue why, but all my life, one in a million seems to happen to me monthly, <laughs> to, from guide season to guide season. I don't know why, it's just the luck I got. You know, I don't do stupid things, I don't set myself up for stupid shit. It's just, uh, for some strange reason, one in a million has happened to me numerous, numerous times. So we were joking about that fact alone before, before our day kicked into gear. You know, I'm like, oh good, here we go. No guns for me, obviously something's gonna happen today. Mark's like, oh yeah, for sure something's gonna happen today with you. I'm like, eh, oh well, here we go. And we ran up, we hung a left, got into the gulch, got up into the burn, and tied up the horses, and I said, hey man, you wanna sit here for a bit and we'll glass and uh, see if we can't find an elk or spot a big grizzly bear in a little fire here. He's like, okay, hey, right on, sure, cool. So we're in this burn. The biggest, thickest tree is probably that big in the trunk. That's it. And maybe 15 feet tall. And silver. <laughs> there's there, there's a silver trunk like this left over. There's nothing left to them in the ground. They just fall over nonstop, especially on windy days. We don't want to be in there. And the crisscross silver poles crossed everywhere. There's willow up to here. Um, it's just not very friendly for walking around. And there's definitely no trees to climb if you had to climb one if something really bad was happening. We're sitting there and I've got, I'm starting to light this fire. My hunter goes, hey man, check out that moose. And I'm like, where is it? Other side of the valley there. And I look over and here's this great big huge, I guessed him at 62 to 64 inch wide frickin' bowls. His pans are tipped out like this. And he's only got two big brow tines, two big brow tines. And I think he only had like four or five points aside, but super long old gnarly thick pans. Everything's thick and compact and wide and, and massive, massive body and his velvet was just starting to hang off in strips like a monster, Medusa monster. And he's frickin' running, running down the side of the river, way high up, running down the side of the valley, back down to where it tightens up in the bottom, to where we just rolled, rode up in that creek on the horse trail. He came from over the height of land up in, into the gulch with us. So he's about three quarters of a mile away. He's running downhill, full running. And I'm like, holy shit, look at him go. That was pretty crazy. And I go back to making the fire and I said to the guy, I go, hey, well, you know, keep an eye open for where that, keep an eye open where that moose came from. And you might get lucky and you might see a few wolves pop up right there, a grizzly bear, because that's the only thing that's gonna make a great big bull like that run in a panic right now, because they're not running. He definitely didn't get in a fight and get beat up and there's no bull moose running behind him. So uh, I go back to tending the fire and all of a sudden, probably about three minutes later, boom, 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 boom. And here is this bull moose with the velvet and the bloody antlers and the shit hanging off him. And he is standing there. I'm looking up at him. 
I'm looking up at this moose and he's like, I'm all out of breath and he's looking right at me. I grabbed the hunter's rifle and I am literally squatted down, pointing the rifle up at this bull moose, swearing at it, going, get the fuck out of here, you idiot. Piss off, get out of here. And he's looking at me, he spins and he starts ripping full speed. It scared the shit out of me, man. I mean, you, you got a, uh, you got a 2,000, 1,800, 2,000 pound bull moose standing there probably 10 feet away from me, looking down on me. I mean, he had me if he was, you know, an attacking kind of animal, but obviously not. The adrenaline blast, me and the hunter laughing and all excited, like, holy shit, was that nuts? Was that crazy? Too bad I didn't have a camera, blah, 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 and off he goes. And now I go back to messing with the fire again. And uh, about, I don't know, <laughs> not too long after that, Hunter goes, he's from West Virginia, he goes, hey man, take a look at that effing bear. What bear? Running where the moose just came from. I'm like, what? And here is this freaking big, mature, grizzly boar. And he is booking step for step where that moose had just come from. And he's running on the moose's trail. He's running down the side of the bull, and then he stops, he goes like this. And then, and here he comes, and I'm like, Oh shit! I'm like, oh my god, um, this grizzly bear is going to be 10 feet away from me in like two minutes, max. There's nothing I can do about it, and this is going down. I don't have a gun, and I don't know this guy. I don't know if he's gonna shit himself, throw the gun, and scream. Because I've had that happen. That's another story. Uh, my childhood best friend threw the gun and started running on a bear charge, and I had to pick up the gun. That's another story. I'll talk about later. So experience lesson learned no take no taken on that experience previous to this so you never know how somebody's gonna react when the shit goes down i've had a type um vietnam veterans that actually started crying because they didn't want to sneak in on a grizzly bear they're so freaked out and they seemed kick-ass tough guys before that went down so i'm just saying you don't know how people are going to react everybody reacts differently I got this guy from West Virginia. He's only shot little white-tailed deer ever before in his lifetime. He shot a big moose with me four days earlier, three days earlier. And now I have a jacked up, fired up, predator mode, mature mountain grizzly bear galloping in on me. And he is going to be exactly where I'm standing. And he's gonna be there in two minutes. I know this, the grizzly bear doesn't know this, but this is what's going down. And there's no way getting out of it and there's no trees big enough for me to climb, ready to climb, there's nowhere I can go to escape. The horses are tied up down the hill. So right away I go, okay, back up, back up from that spot, back up. I wanted to get obviously farther than 10 feet. I wanted to get more than 10 feet away from where the moose is just standing because that bear is going to be standing right there. He's going to be there any minute now, any second now. So I wanted to back up at least 10 yards, at least 15 yards, backed up, use that tree as a rest, hold where the moose was and do not move. Period. He's like, okay, I go jack one in right now, get the safety off right now. Okay. And you pull that trigger and he disappears in that willow, because the willow's up to here, up to your waist. I said, do not make a frickin' sound. I don't want to hear one sound out of you for at least 30 minutes. Period. And that's another story. Because um, in the past, I've been in on bear kills where we shot them, laid them out like a rug, sat there and watched them for an hour and had lunch and then had to go around to, above him to get dropped down onto him, lost sight of him, got down to where he was and they're gone, they're still alive and all hell breaks loose and that's another story. When you shoot a great big grizzly in close quarters, he disappears in a willow, do not make a freaking sound unless he, you know, if he doesn't know you're there, he doesn't know what did that to him, you're going to be good. He's not going to get adrenalized. An adrenalized grizzly bear with a bullet hole in him is the worst thing in, on the planet. It's the worst thing period. You do not want a grizzly bear, even if both of his lungs are ripped apart, it doesn't matter. If they get adrenalized, they can go forever. More stories on that later. You just don't want it to happen. Okay and uh, you do not, if he, if you shoot a grizzly bear, he knows you did it, his adrenaline's going to be up anyway, but it's going to go 10 times up because now the number one predator in the woods is right close to him and he knows we're trying to kill him and he's going to try to kill you back. 100% of the time. Grizzly bears try to kill you back. <laughs> so, you pull that trigger, he disappears, do not make a sound for 30 minutes. Get another one in the pipe. He's like, okay. So he's on the, he's down there aimed at that spot, and I'm backing up. <laughs> I'm backing up a little more, because I don't have a gun. 
I don't care who you are. When a, if a six, eight, seven, eight hundred pound mountain grizzly bear is on top of another human being and you don't have anything, any kind of a weapon, you tell me what you're going to do. <laughs> you're not going to be able to do anything. You are not going to be able to do anything to a grizzly bear killing your friend without a weapon. <laughs> you know, you might beat him with a stick. He's going to, he's going to do you like a blender. It's all there is to it. So I backed up maybe another 10, 15 feet behind the hunter. I'm standing on a crisscross log. I'm holding on to two silver ones. My heart's pumping like a mofo because I don't know what's about to happen. Is he going to wound him? Uh, is he going to smoke him and wound him and possibly get in a little bit of a pickle? Is the bear going to get wounded and uh, dummy both of us? Is he going to miss? Um, I don't know. But every single one of these thoughts is ripping through my brain rapid fire and there's nothing you do about it I mean, there's no there's no thinking about the situation and getting pre-planned for it there's no pre-planning and making it absolutely perfect you are you're faced with an absolute emergency uh, it's going down there's no pressing pause there's no rewinding you gotta everything's got to go down perfectly right now and you just hope for the best so <laughs> we're standing there and all of a sudden I'm watching my horses and my horses are about 30 yards down below me you just see their heads and I can see their ears. You can't sneak up on a horse, try it. And uh, you can see their ears are like radar. They're like this, both of them, folks in the same spot, they're going like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. So I'm watching the ears like radar, and the bear is ripping right in front of them, past them, gets up, there he is right there where the moose was. So he's running this way. Okay, so if the cameras are us with the guns pointing at the bear, the bear is running this way. Then he goes by the horses where he smelt, whether he smelt the horses or saw them as corner his eye, going like this. And he's going like that, looking back at the horses. We're right where the cameras are facing me, the guns. And they can just see the, the, just the top front of his shoulders above the willow. This huge neck in his head. And I can see the hunter had a dead breast. The hunter's in front of me, bears right there. And I just whispered real quiet, neck him. I'm like, neck him. Boom! Boom! It's all the shot fly. Boom! Uh, the grizzly drops into the willow. He jacks another one in. I'm holding onto the onto the silver, uh, the old burnt out tree trunks. You know, <laughs> pucker factor is about a 20 out of 10. The hunter's sitting there and we're just sitting there frozen. Staring at the spot where this, this grizzly bear just dropped. Five minutes into standing there not seeing anything. The hunter turns on facing me like this. I smoked him. And I'm like, shut up. Idiot, what are you doing? So no sooner that I looked at him went Tap. All of a sudden, you know, right there, 10 yards, you can hear this And you hear the most evil, angry, brutal, barrel chest voiced uh, rumble through your freaking soul sound is belting out of the willow right there like right there and it's getting louder and it's getting louder and louder and angrier and louder and angrier <laughs> there's probably finger marks in those two two tree trunks and i'm just staring her frozen thinking holy shit now what <laughs> you know and uh there's so many grizzlies in that burn these are mountain grizzlies too they're not coastal fish fed fish fed brown bears this is mountain grizzly bears, and you are not going to get a worse attitude in any uh, predator, mammal, than a, a mountain grizzly bear in North America. It's not going to happen. The bear's freaking out. The hunter's still standing there. This willow up to like just past your waist, maybe your waist height willow, and you can't see, you just can't see in front of you. And he's in that willow, and he is going off, and he's not dying. It's, the sounds aren't getting any quieter. It's not slowing down. And he is going ape shit. You know, as the guide, and knowing what can happen, you know, what's going down, I'm like, well, okay, do I go up and get the gun? Do I go in there? Should I go up and get the gun off this dude and go in there and smoke this thing? Or do I send him in there? Should I send him in there? Is he gonna shit himself, throw the gun? and have this bear on top from shredding. Does the bear know we're there? I don't think so, obviously. 
Um, and right when I'm, I'm, this is all going down in like two seconds, three seconds, these thoughts. And all of a sudden, the hunter turns around and goes like this. Y'all want me to go in there and smoke them again? You okay with that? Hell yeah. All right, man. You got one in the tube. Get the safety off. Get your gun up now. And, and slowly what? step in on there and, and, and do them. Guy's got his gun up and he's slowly going in and he's slowly going in and he's slowly going in like this and I'm slowly backing up, I'm slowly backing up. I don't even have a freaking pocket knife on me. I mean nothing. I got nothing. Not even a stick. There's nothing I can do. I'm 100% helpless. I guess I could stand there and scream like a girl guide, but that's about it. So anyways, I'm backing up a little bit and all of a sudden you see him tense up. Boom! Boom! Shot three more times. And then the sound stop. Shit, thank God. And I go up there. Now get this one. He was shooting a frickin' monster of a gun, too. It was a 7mm STW, that's it. Just as frickin' round like a, a bazooka. But anyway, um, the bear was facing us. His whole body was facing us. And I remember he was running that way, and he spun around. Boom. Well, he was facing us, and just as if a four-wheel drive was stuck in sand and it burned down four ruts for all four tires, he had four burnout marks for all four paws, and his nose was folded underneath his body, wrapped under his body all the way to his butthole because he could not pick up his head because the hunter, his bullet did not sever the bone. It didn't hit any bone in that neck bone. It had shot a little high and all of the muscle and all the, the meat and the muscle in the top of that grizzly's neck was jello and completely blown apart in about the space of a pie plate on top of it. It was all gone. So he didn't even have one fiber of muscle fiber left to pick his head up, but he hurt us. And you know, you're not gonna, that didn't obviously doesn't, that doesn't kill anything. There's no artery up there. He didn't sever the bone. That sucker was alive. You know, if it had, if that bone, it might have skipped, maybe hit one of those little vertebrates or something, because it did a shitload of damage in that meat. It didn't just burn a hole through. Otherwise, uh, you know, it would have been pretty ugly. But 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 the neck bone was not broken. Um, he must have clipped something, you know, in the top of it, a little bit of that, that vertebrae wing or whatever. He must have, because it, it was just mulched. The, the meat on the top of that bear's neck, the muscle was done. He couldn't pick up his head. He's trying to charge us, but his head is folding underneath his body, and he's going like this. The frustration that freaking bear must have had must have been ridiculous. Uh, but that's what happened. So, uh, yeah, we got the bear, and uh, sure enough, the one day that I leave camp without my rifle scabbard, without my gun, uh, another one in a million um, encounter, another one in a million experience happened. I mean, what are the chances? A 60 inch plus bull comes running in, stands there, looking down him for 10 feet, and three minutes later, it was a seven foot six, I think it's seven foot six uh, boar grizzly bear, decent boar. And next thing you know, you got a mature grizzly boar chasing the moose and landing in our laps at 10 feet. I mean, there you go, another one in a million. Hunt story. <laughs> Anyways, again, uh, check out my hunting apps on the iTunes, uh, on the App Store. Uh, just Google Big Game Hunting, but Hat Hunt Outdoors or else Black Hill Hunter. And uh, have a look if you want to uh, collect up some of the uh, numerous years of experience we've got on there. And you can utilize it in the mountains, uh, anywhere on the planet, build the internet connection. There you go, hunt stories. Another one. They're crazy.